Hello, we're on the sixth Sunday after Trinity, so welcome to Warrington and Wetley Rocks, where we are at the moment. Uh, this week we've got Reverend Trevor. This morning's reading is taken from Luke chapter 11, verses 1 to 13. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us, and lead us not into temptation. Then Jesus said to them, Suppose you have a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have no food to off offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, Don't bother me, the door is already locked, and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though we will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened to you, for everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks the door will be opened. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? And this is the word of the Lord. So one of Jesus' disciples says to him, Lord, teach us to pray. And Jesus duly obliged with a shortened version of what we call the Lord's Prayer. The longer version can be found in Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 to 13. I'm actually reassured that this disciple needed help with prayer because a lot of us do struggle with prayer. I do, even though I've been praying since I was little and firmly believe that prayer changes things. Apparently, Archbishop William Temple used to say, people tell me that answers to prayer are merely coincidences. And he continued, I can only reply that when I pray, coincidences happen, and when I stop praying, they stop happening. Jesus introduced the Lord's Prayer, as we have it in Luke, with the words, when you pray, say. So it seems these are the words he intended us to use, whilst in Matthew's Gospel, Jesus introduces that version of the Lord's Prayer with the words, This then is how you should pray, which I think suggests that the prayer is meant to be more of a model on which we can base other prayers. Both approaches have their advantages. I prefer using the Lord's Prayer as a pattern for my prayers, purely and simply because it makes me think, and I believe we should be using our minds in prayer. On the other hand, there is something reassuring about using a form of words that we all know. Having said that, younger generations aren't so familiar with the Lord's Prayer, and those that are still have their preferences for the traditional or modern language. If we look closely at the Lord's Prayer in Luke, we see that Jesus 
still draws us to key areas for worship and prayer, such as addressing God as Father and rejoicing in that relationship, showing due reverence to God, praying for his kingdom to come, not just in the fullness of time, but now in the hearts and lives of those who subject themselves to him. We are to pray also for all we need, as opposed to all we want, and such prayer should be one day at a time. We are to pray for forgiveness and to be forgiving, apparently without limit. And finally, we are to be kept free from life's many temptations. Jesus then takes the opportunity to share a short parable which shows that prayer should be persistent and that God is always ready to forgive. It's actually, I think, more of a challenge than a story. Jesus says, imagine going to a friend at midnight, needing his help and asking the loan of three loaves. You have a good reason. Another friend has come to you on a journey and you have no food to offer him. You're well aware that hospitality in your culture is seen as a sacred duty and at that time of day you have no means of going out to buy some food for your unexpected guest. You can't expect much of a welcome from your friend and you don't get one. Don't bother me, he says. My children and I are already in bed. The door is locked. It will be just too great a disruption for me to respond to your request. It's clear that the food isn't the problem, but the friendship doesn't seem to be enough to get your friend to upset his family to come and come to your aid. However, you are desperate and you stick at it. You don't go away. You keep trying, actually making a bit of a nuisance of yourself and hoping that in the course of time, your friend will understand the predicament you were in. And eventually, your pleading pays off. And as Jesus suggests, Friendship may not be enough, but your persistence will cause your friend to get up and give you as much as you need. So the message from this short parable would appear to be clear. We must never give up in prayer. Do we want what we're asking for enough to persist if we do not receive the answer immediately? We must be careful with the parable not to see God in the role of the reluctant friend. In fact, God offers a contrast, being always eager to give. However, there is a proviso. Jesus goes on to say, we must ask, we must seek, and we must knock. And in each case, there will be the appropriate response. We should note that each of these verbs that Jesus uses is continuous. He is not speaking of single activities, but of those that persist. It would be wrong to believe from all of this that we always receive what we ask for. Jesus is saying that all true prayer is always heard and answered, but answered in the way that Jesus sees best. Jesus concludes by noting that those who are parents, even though we make many mistakes, will give good gifts to our children. And if that is the case, how much greater will be the gift our Heavenly Father gives to his children who ask him, and that is for the gift of the Holy Spirit. So, let us treasure the gift of prayer.
pray at all times, persist when prayer is difficult, and pray for the gift of the Holy Spirit. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. 